In section 5.2, we talked about probability distributions. They're usually given to us as tables, where in the left-hand column we have all possible outcomes, and in the right-hand column we have the probability associated with each of those outcomes. We said that in order to be a probability distribution, each one of the probabilities had to be a number between 0 and 1, which is basically just the definition of probability, and all of the probabilities had to add up either to 1 or something very, very close to 1, such as 0.999 or 1.001. In sections 5.3 and 5.4, we talk about a specific type of probability distribution known as a binomial probability distribution. We'll talk about the definition of a binomial probability distribution and how to find the mean, the variance, and the standard deviation of a binomial probability distribution. Binomial probability distributions um, have outcomes that fall into two categories. We can call the two uh, categories success and failure, or acceptable and defective, or survived and died. When there are only two possible outcomes, there's a good chance that you're dealing with a binomial probability distribution. It does have other requirements, though. In order to be a binomial probability distribution, there has to be a fixed number of trials. You can say, I'm going to roll a die 10 times, and that's a fixed number of trial, but you can't say, I'm going to roll the die until I get a 7. The trials must be independent. Um, one, what happens on one trial can in no way affect what's happening on another trial. Each trial must have all outcomes classified in two categories. We commonly just call those success and failure, but that's not a value judgment. Um, success is whatever we're studying. So if we're studying the number of people who develop um, a certain type of cancer, then developing that type of cancer would be what we were calling success and not developing it would be a failure. It's very important to understand we're not saying that success is the good outcome and failure is the bad outcome. The fourth requirement is that the probability of success has to remain the same in all trials. It doesn't change from trial to trial. Examples of um, experiments which would be binomial experiments are tossing a coin 20 times to see how many tails occur. We definitely have a fixed number of trials. The trials are independent in that whatever the coin lands on in the first trial doesn't affect what the coin's going to land on in the second trial. Um, the experiment has two possible outcomes, heads and tails, and the probability of landing on tails is going to stay the same no matter how many times you flip the coin. So that's a binomial experiment. Asking 200 people if they watch ABC News, again, that's a fixed number of trials. Whether the first person watches ABC News doesn't affect whether the second person watches ABC News. And um, the two possible outcomes there are yes and no. The last um, example of a binomial experiment is rolling a die to see if a 5 appears. Well, there's a fixed number of trials there. We're only going to roll the die one time. There's only two possible outcomes, either yes, 5 appears, or no, 5 doesn't appear. Um, perhaps this is not the most useful example because we really can't talk about two events being independent if we're only rolling the one, die one time. But this does technically meet the criteria for being a binomial experiment. Examples which are not binomial experiments, rolling a die until a 6 appears. We don't know how long that's going to take. That's not a fixed number of trials. Asking 20 people how old they are. There are not only two outcomes to that question. Drawing two coins out of a bag of 20 coins and recording whether or not it's a nickel. Um, if we phrase the question, is it a nickel, yes or no, then there are only two possible outcomes, but the events are not dependent. If I take one nickel out of the bag, it affects how many nickels are left in the bag for the next trial. So the two events are not independent, and that's not a binomial experiment. How about these examples? Um, number six, 
treating an 863 subjects with Lipitor and asking each subject, how does your head feel? Well, we definitely have a fixed number of trials, but there's more than two possible outcomes to that. So it's not a binomial probability distribution because there aren't just two outcomes. Number eight, treating 152 couples with the Y-sort gender selection method developed by the Genetics and IVF Institute and recording the gender of each of the 152 babies that are born. Certainly there's a fixed number of trials. Um, the gender of the first baby in no way affects the gender of the second baby, so the trials are independent. The probability of a girl or a boy is gonna remain the same for all 152 births, and there are only two possible outcomes, male and female. So that is an example of a probability distribution, excuse me, a binomial probability distribution. Number 10, 15 governors are randomly selected from the 50 governors currently in office, and the gender of each governor is recorded. Well, there's a fixed number of trials, there are only two possible outcomes, um, male and female. And my first instinct says that the gender of Alaska's governor in no way affects the gender of Montana's governor. So yes, they're independent, but we need to think carefully about this. What if I reworded it? There are 50 marbles in a bag and we're gonna draw out 15 then would you consider the trials being independent? Let's say they, the 50 marbles were all either pink or blue, and we're gonna draw out 15. Well, if we draw out a first pink marble, that's gonna affect how many pink marbles are left. So we're not saying that the um, gender of Alaska's governor in any way causes the gender of Montana's governor to be a certain thing. But if you think of this as marbles in a bag, um, we're selecting without replacement. There's a certain number of these 50 governors currently in office. There's a fixed number of pink ones and a fixed number of blue ones. So if we're sampling these 15 without replacement, those events are not independent and therefore it can't be a binomial distribution. Number 12, 200 statistics students are randomly selected and each is asked if he or she owns a TI-84 plus calculator. <clears throat> That's a fixed number of trials, 200, out of the entire population of statistics students. And there are thousands of statistics students um, across the country and across the world. We're gonna select 200 and ask each one if he or she owns a TI-84. Well, there are only two possible outcomes to that. And whether one statistic student um, owns a calculator doesn't affect whether the next student's gonna own a calculator. So yes, that is a binomial probability distribution. Let me say one other thing about number 10 and number 12. The 5% guideline tells us if we're drawing out less than 5% of the population, we can play like the um, events are independent. I didn't think of saying this at first, but number 10, we're drawing 15 out of 50. That's way more than 5%. So we can't use the cumbersome guideline and or the guideline for cumbersome calculations and say we're just going to play like those events are independent. That is another reason that this answer is no, it's not a binomial distribution. But 200 statistics out of the entire population of statistics students definitely would be less than 5% of the population. And that's why we can consider those draws independent. And that is a binomial probability distribution. <clears throat> 